I guess, uh, you know, I had opportunities to work in a chemistry lab when I was a kid, really a kid. And on Saturdays, I would often go in um, in my father's lab and experiment. I can't say anything other than experiment. There was no real purpose, but just to go and uh, see what would happen. It's a fascinating thing to be able to go in, oh, let's see what happens. And I, I um, still kind of do that today. I liken it sometimes to turning over rocks and seeing what's under it. Meet Professor of Chemistry and recipient of the First Citizens Bank Scholars Medal, Dr. Craig Ogle. That natural curiosity he discovered in his father's lab proved vital in providing a career philosophy Ogle still follows today. Never do something you don't first understand. It was that mantra that led Ogle to employ and refine a unique yet sparsely used research technique called Rapid Injection Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, or RINMR, a technique that ultimately transformed his career and allowed him to shed light on reactions that were never truly understood. I had a, um, a technique that I learned in Switzerland as a postdoc, and when I came to UNC Charlotte, um, we set up a, a system to, to reproduce that. We call it Rapid Injection NMR. And it has some really nice features. It, it incorporates NMR spectroscopy, um, which is probably the most powerful general tool for identifying organic chemicals, what they actually are. Not too many people use this method. So there's maybe a couple of other labs in, in the whole United States that have this capability. And so we have an NMR instrument, probably every chemistry program has this, but what he's been able to do is to actually modify the instrument, okay? So what he can do is he has a special system so that he can take um, a, a vial, put it into the NMR instrument, and then while it's in the instrument, add something else and allow a reaction to occur at a very low temperature. And so therefore what you can do is you can actually monitor the reaction in the instrument as opposed to only looking at the end product, which is what most, most people do. So if you can understand what those details are and control the reactions better, you can increase the yield of the product you want, decrease side reactions, maybe use cheaper materials. Using the RI NMR technique, Ogle, along with his collaborator Steve Burtz, Mike Murphy, and his student research team, collectively have made an indelible mark on the world of synthetic organic chemistry. Copper compounds are central to the production of many useful organic molecules, such as pharmaceuticals. Although copper three intermediates were presumed to be important in copper-promoted reactions, their identification and reactivity eluded researchers for decades, making copper chemistry somewhat unpredictable. So these compounds have been proposed, but nobody's been able to prove that they exist. And what he's been able to do is to actually see them in the NMR instrument and then study how they actually react. It's a eureka moment that came over, you know, several weeks. There wasn't anything, oh, there it is. Um, you know, I think when we first saw the copper three intermediate, we didn't know what it was. And I, I believe we probably took three months to to get around to figuring out what it was. And then, of course, uh, I mean, at that point, you're ready to tell the world about it, and, and we did. I think it's also impressive with how Craig is able to do this very sophisticated work here at UNC Charlotte. Okay? And, and he's able to do it because he actually gets in there and does the work as well. Um, he mentors people so that you know, they, they're undergraduates or graduate students, but then they're actually making very important contributions to this work. He has a very dedicated group of students. Some of these students stay in his group, start as very early in their undergraduate research and, and continue sometimes through, you know, through the master's program and work long hours and almost every day of the week. And this inspired by his example. You know, he's molded me as a scientist, basically. And I think everything I do has a background in how he's trained me as a scientist and how, how I think about you know, scientific, approaching a scientific problem. He's really been key in kind of helping me along, trying to figure out what it is that I really want to do with my academics and with my career. And I couldn't have asked for a better 
mentor to kind of transition me from these classes to grad level type of research. I look at him now as almost like my chemistry father. He, he was the one who guided me through and just really helped me out along the way and it's, it's been great. I feel like the students are a major product. Um, even in our research, the students are what comes out of that and, and uh, you're leading them in their scientific curiosity and how to become uh, scientists. A measure of someone's ability as a mentor is really reflected not really by what the person says about themselves but what you see their students actually doing. He didn't treat me for example, he doesn't treat anybody else who's new to the lab or who's been in the lab for a long time any differently than he would one of his professional peers. He expects you to be on the level that he wants his grad students to be on and as an undergrad I think it's great because it's very rare to get that kind of opportunity and that kind of interaction with a professor at an undergrad level, especially in a big institution. He definitely tries to uh, foster an environment where we're creative, we have freedoms of creativity. If we want to try something, we try it. If, if it fails, it fails. Um, but in doing that, we, we learn from our failures and we, we can progress as scientists in that way. He identifies talents in people and he gets them interested in what he's doing. And, and he also gives them a lot of credit for what they do as well. So he definitely thanks them and you know, anytime there's a publication, their name's on the paper as well because they contributed to it. I share this award with my many collaborators and my many students and you know, in fact, um, I the chemistry department. I mean, without the facilities and the support from the chemistry department the university, none of this could happen. And, uh, but it is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be building careers and teach them how to investigate. And I think this is what we've been doing.